In today's video, I wanna give you guys five actionable tips to help you make running feel easier as a hybrid athlete. Does running feel hard? Maybe you're a bigger athlete and you like to use that as your excuse as to why running is hard. Or maybe you just feel lost in how to progress your running beyond just running longer and longer and longer. If you can relate to any of these questions, then this video is for you. Today, I'm gonna give you my cheat code on how I went from dreading running and getting little niggles continuously after all of my runs to looking forward to each and every one of my runs. Hi, I'm Rob and I'm an online coach and I'm here to help you get bigger, stronger and fitter. If you're new to the channel, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you very much. Let's jump into my five points to help running feel easier for you. So point number one is find more than one gear. It sounds obvious, but, but hear me out. So I started running at an easy effort continuously. I was doing a lot of zone two work. Well, it was more of a walk and run, but it was just so hard to stay motivated with the lack of intensity and the fact that it was so hard to actually continue to run for a longer duration without having to walk in between to keep my heart rate down. I found myself wanting to give up because there was just no excitement compared to say my strength training where I'd be able to go in and hit some big numbers. And because this was just so far on the other other side of how to train it just felt so foreign to me however by running slower helped me build up a foundation to give me the ability to actually work my peaks we want to build our aerobic base so we can do efforts for say five or more minutes say below our threshold pace but at the same time, we also wanna be building our anaerobic base, which is where we're gonna be doing things like say sprints or shorter bursts of intensity. This development will make sure that you're a complete runner. And especially if you're a hybrid athlete, you know that running is just part of your training, not your only focus. We wanna make sure that these sessions count because we've got so much to fit in still in the week it's important that these sessions are specific towards your goals, whatever you're trying to train for at the moment. So when I say we need to find more than one gear, we need to be able to run slow and we need to be able to run fast rather than always running in that middle zone where you're running as hard as you can for as long as you can and then feel like you're just falling off a cliff gradually. So what's running easier? Running easier is going to be thinking about running at a conversational pace. So we're thinking about a three or four out of 10. There's a lot of hype around hitting your zone two heart rate for your easy run. So if you've got a chest strap, it's a really nice way to kind of keep yourself in check. You've also got the Maffetone method where we take 180 minus your age to give you your max easy running heart rate. So for example, me at the moment being 35, I have 180 minus 35, which gives me a maximum easy heart rate of 145. Now there are a few other little bits that you can do to kind of adjust that heart rate based on some of the Maffeto methods, but this gives us a nice place to start. So to put zone two and the Maffeto method in perspective for me, my zone two max heart rate is 136 and my Maffeto heart rate is 145. So still within a bit of a ballpark of each other, but the main thing is, is that we're running easy because the bigger the base we build, the stronger our foundations will be, which means the higher the peaks can be too. The way I like to think of easy running is a bit like building an Egyptian pyramid. So you've got a big wide base and you peak your way up to this really high point of intensity. Unlike if you were trying to build a bunch of Roman columns and putting your foundations on top of that, you don't wanna to have to build loads of columns just to support your intensity that you wanna to get to at the top. So if we flip that around, have our big foundations, it means that we can reach that higher point in a more sustainable way and help our bodies adapt easier to the higher intensities. To me, sprints are the equivalent to strength training and easy running is the equivalent to bodybuilding. Now stick with me here. You want strength training to make sure you're not all show and no go but it's a lot harder to recover if all you're continually doing is breaking yourself down with heavy sets. Whereas by adding some bodybuilding in, it means we can keep the volume quite high, but the intensity will be a little bit lower, which means we can do it more often. So to ensure that you can really start to own your running, make sure we know how to switch gears between easy and hard, and make sure you're putting the time and effort in to build the foundations to your pyramid. 
So point number two is spice it up. We wanna get off the paved roads and get ourselves onto the trails or into the parks onto that softer ground. Now being a heavier runner myself, sitting at around the 100 kilo mark, exposing myself to trail runs and to park runs was a really nice way for me to build volume in my long runs without putting all that extra stress through my body from running on pavements. Now as someone who has to get their sessions in normally first thing in the morning, and when I'm talking about first thing, I'm talking about waking up at four type time to start my workouts, going into a park probably isn't the safest or really probably not the nicest thing to do. So the roads will have to do sometimes. But when I get the opportunity, I make sure I get my runs done in the park. I try and expose myself to those softer grounds because it's just going to help with less force going through my joints. And the less force going through my joints will equal less potential risk of injury, which then equals more time being able to run because I'm not injured. So some considerations you might have to make when you're changing your running from, say, paved roads to more softer terrains, things like your trail runs or running in a park. And they are your splits might be slower and your heart rate may be higher also. But the benefits that you get from running on trails or in the park are improved foot strength from running on the uneven surfaces and just like a better general well-being, being surrounded by greenery, being like in nature rather in that concrete jungle. So if you do your long runs based on time on feet rather than accumulating a certain distance, utilizing trail runs in these long runs are a really nice way to kind of take that stress away from the body as much and improve your mental health while also doing it at the same time. Now, if you are prepping yourself for a race, what I do like to do is get myself into the park, take most of my run off-road, and then I have a little bit of a race pace intensity where I will be running on the pavements. Because at the end of the day, I do want some specificity, get me ready for my races. So blending the two is a really nice way to try and get the best of both worlds. Now, if you're training for a race, longevity isn't your A goal. That's gonna be your race. We want to be able to run hard and we want to be able to run fast so making sure maybe your intense runs or your interval sessions are on the pavement so you can get that specificity ready for your races and then the long runs as i mentioned before that's where you might want to dabble in running on the trail and then doing some race pace efforts on the pavements themselves. But beyond race specific running, we wanna be able to keep it up for the long run. So by putting alternatives into our training will help longevity in running and keep us being able to run further for longer. Point three is don't be a hero. Have you found yourself thinking, running is feeling great at the moment, my 5K is on fire. Do you know what I'll do? I'm gonna run a 10K and see how that feels. I've never ran more than 5K, but I'm sure I'll be fine. Now that is pretty much flirting with risk for not really a good payoff. Yes, you ran 10K, but at what cost? The last thing we want is to be put out of the game when we're feeling good. And we definitely don't wanna be going back a step or two, or even worse, being put off running altogether because of an injury that we sustained by being a hero. So when we're looking to run further, and faster, we want to progressively overload the body rather than going billy big balls and having a massive potential risk of injury. Now, the general rule of thumb is you don't really want to increase more than five to 10% every week of your total volume. Now, caveat, if you're running 30 minutes on your long run, you should probably only increase to 33 minutes if you're following this principle. However, most of us will probably go straight to 35 minutes because we won't like that 33 minute. It's just not a nice clean bookend. Most of us will like to progress through the zeros and the fives. So 30, 35, 40, 45. Now this is fine, but the main thing is we listen to our body and see how we responded to the increase. And if the increase is small enough to not cause too much stress on the body, but big enough to cause just enough stress for change, then we're doing something right. Now, if you want to run longer and you run twice a week, you could always reduce the total volume in your intense session and increase the long session a little bit more. So you're still, your total weekly volume is increasing by that five to 10% mark. This strategy applies to running, cycling, strength training, pretty much anything where you have to progressively overload the body to be able to do more. The main thing is we keep the increases moderate so that our body has enough ability to recover from the stress, but not too much where we can't recover between sessions because we want to have that ability to take notes on the body. Like, have we got any new niggles come up after we did a set distance or have we just felt more 
tired? How have you felt? Maybe has your nutrition changed? Have you been craving different foods? These are just some examples of things you might ask yourself. And it's important that you take note of these questions and note down your response. Now let's put this example into action. So if you have two running sessions a week, we have one fast speed focus session, and then we have one slow and distance based session. So in week one, if our interval session is 10 minutes warm up with five rounds of one minute at a fast pace and one minute recovery, and then a 10 minute cool down, that's 30 total minutes of work. And then we have on our second session, we have a 30 minute easy run. Now this is week one and you're feeling pretty good. So how do you increase next week? So we have 60 total minutes to build upon. So you can start to think about your goal specifically and think, do I need to be able to run long or do I need to be able to run fast? So what that could look like is maybe three more efforts in our interval session. So three more efforts of one minute on, one minute off. So now that'll be a total of eight intervals in that session. Or we could just add on five minutes to our long run because we wouldn't add six minutes because that would just be weird. Now point four is form. Now this was actually something that was relatively new to me, which sounds really weird coming from a strength background, but I feel like I should just be able to just go out and run. But when I started to pay attention to my stride length or how I was holding myself when I was running, things started to feel easier. And I started to get less niggles. And I just started to feel better actually running. Which is crazy when you think, I don't just go up to a barbell and do a lift without thinking about positions. I get into my position and then I execute the lifts. So running should be the same thing, but we all start somewhere. So a couple of changes that I put into my training to really help me be consistent in my running and feel really good is the first one was shortening my stride length. I used to overstride, so I used to kind of think more like a sprinter when I was running, a big long strides of pulling myself through. And what I found, I started to get a lot of shin splints, I started to get a lot of knee pain, because when I was landing on my heels, I was creating a lot of stress going through my body. And as I mentioned earlier, 100 kilos going through those joints really isn't a good time. And then also adding in some running specific strength exercises started to really help my form because I started to bring an awareness to positions that I want to be holding or utilizing when I'm going for a run. Now let's just start with my stride length. By having my feet landing underneath me rather than all the way out in front of me means my body could just absorb those stresses easier, which then meant I was able to get out running more often because I was feeling less beaten up after each run. Now, another thing that really helped my running form was running without music, because rather than running to the speed of the music that I'm listening to, currently listen to a lot of house music, so it's quite fast paced, by running without music, I can listen to my cadence. I can listen to how my feet are moving. I can listen to my breathing. I have a lot more awareness of where my body is in space and time, which means I was able to find my rhythm rather than the rhythm of music. So by running within myself, it means I can notice when changes are happening and I can understand if I need to change my form, my speed, or can I just crack on? So by having an awareness of my form and where I am in space and time, just means I can get the most out of my runs rather than just enduring them. Now, point five is don't forget to lift and especially don't forget to train those legs. Now I touched on this in point four. If you wanna help your joints become more robust and your muscles more primed for stress, you need to lift. And as a hybrid athlete, this doesn't come as a surprise. But as a hybrid athlete, you need to think, okay, at what cost do the strength training exercises that I'm choosing for my lower body affect my running or affect my cycling? Now, if you're just a runner or say a triathlete, strength training can be put to the side because of the stresses from the demands of the sport that you're doing means that strength training is on a back burner, which is the last thing you wanna be doing. Now, I can appreciate with the total weekly volume being quite high, strength training isn't at the top of the priority list, but by making sure that you still strength train, just means that you're creating better joint health, you're creating stronger muscles, which means you're gonna have the ability to push more in your running or your triathlons. So we need to make sure we're finding the appropriate time to be able to add in strength training into our weekly volume. Now remember, we're gonna to want to strength train because it's gonna help us run faster because Building stronger legs will help you build better coordination within your movements and build a stronger foundation for you to be able to produce force from. Strength training also helps reduce injuries because by strengthening your joints, your tendons, your ligaments, your muscles are gonna mean that they're gonna become more robust at absorbing and distributing the forces that occur from running around the body a lot easier. So including exercises like lunges, squats, deadlifts, push-ups, 
pull-ups, some core work, some carries, and more, all within your training, means you can start to build a robust body that's ready for all the extra stresses that you're putting on your body. Now, if you're interested in getting stronger and faster, I've got a 13 week lift and run program for you. We build up your body by training both upper and lower body and full body in a training week, making sure that you are a fully robust, strong athlete, while also giving you two runs a week, meeting you where you're at, whether you're trying to build your first 5K, you're trying to improve your 5K time, or if you're trying to improve or run your first 10K, I've got you. So the Strength Formula Lift and Run program has three strength sessions a week and two run sessions a week, all taking in consideration the points that we've been discussing throughout this video. So click the first link in the description and get the program delivered directly to your phone through my app. And remember, once you purchase a program, that program is yours. You can start it whenever you want and you can restart it whenever you see fit. And as a thank you for getting this far into the video, you can get a 20% saving by using the code YTSAVING at checkout, and then you get 20% off all of my fixed length training programs. Now, do you want a sneak peek at week one, the test week, the week where we set our benchmarks knowing how we're gonna progress moving forward? Take a screenshot of the video now and you can see how the week is laid out and how we're gonna find benchmarks that we can work on over the next 12 weeks. Now, lastly, I wanna share a mistake that I made with you guys that nearly stopped me running altogether. With access to so many new tools and technologies that are helping us run faster and faster, it can be really easy to get suckered in to this kind of stuff, especially if you're a sucker for tech or sucker for new things. And I'm one of those people. But even if you do utilize any of these tools, you need to still make sure you progressively overload the body just like you normally would. Because if you use something which suddenly makes you a lot faster, your body has to adapt from that new speed you're running at. An example of this is super shoes, carbon plated shoes. So these are great at absorbing energy that you put into the ground and propelling you forward, which in turn then helps make running feel easier. But even if it feels easier, remember it is still an increase in stress on the body that you're gonna have to recover from. So my lesson in particular is, it was my birthday recently and I got some Vaporfly 3s because I heard they were just an unreal shoe and they made you a lot faster. So I went out on my interval run as I've been doing every Wednesday and in week one of this I was running at a 430 pace per kilometer. Now I put on these shoes and I ran at a 355 per kilometer pace. That's 35 seconds faster per kilometer. That's a lot of time for me. Now it was great, it was essentially free time but it cost me quite a bit of stress on the body which I didn't necessarily think would happen because my knees were not ready for that stress, my ankles weren't ready for that stress, my body wasn't ready for that stress, which meant my recovery afterwards took a lot longer than it had been in previous weeks. Now this was normal because I was excited to try out these shoes and because I heard they made me go faster, I thought, great, let's see how fast I can go. Hindsight is a wonderful thing. Now if I had the ability to change that, I would have tried to run about 10 to 15 seconds faster, so I was a bit more conservative with that increase in speed. So what I should have done is been a bit more disciplined with my speed increase. And rather than increasing by say 30, 35 seconds, I probably should have been closer to that 10 to 15 second increase because I would have still wanted to utilize the propulsion say from the shoes, but I still wanted to try and run slightly within myself. Lessons have definitely been learned. So in summary, I would have never have thought I'd be a massive advocate for running. Running has made me feel stronger, it's made me feel fitter, and it's just made me feel healthier. Now I'm gutted I held off running properly for so long. And I guess the only real reasons were I was trying to be a hero too soon and run too fast and do too much too soon. I didn't pay enough attention to my running form because I always listened to music when I went for a run. I would always run on pavements because it was easier. So I never diversified my terrains that I ran on. And I only ever had one gear when it comes to running and that was go. But I'm happy I've now discovered it now. I'm really getting into it and I'm enjoying every single run that I'm going on. And if you want to save yourself from making these mistakes, especially if you're getting into the world of hybrid training, where you're now including running within your strength training, definitely check out my strength formula lift and run program, where we lift three times a week, we run twice a week, we follow the principles that I've mentioned throughout this video, and if you click the first link in the description and use the code YTSAVING, you can save yourself 20% 
off this 13 week plan. So as always, thanks a lot for watching guys and I'll see you next week.